In the next part of the essay, uh, we're looking at part three of the Weberianism essay. Uh, we're going to look at functionalism and postmodernism. Uh, we're going to give a, a brief conclusion. So, the functionalists would um, be critical of, of Weberian theorists, um, and they would support the idea that uh, the structure of society um, and the culture of society and status are important issues um, in explaining inequality. Um, they would agree with the idea of structuralism, and Weberianism is a structuralist theory, so they would support the focus on a large-scale analysis that Weberians present. The functionalists emphasise consensus and the agreement between social groups, which keeps society stable. They would criticise Weberians for overplaying conflict between social groups, um, where Weberians are similar to Marxists in, in seeing some groups as exploiting others. Functionists see society as meritocratic, and they would argue that Weberians overplay social closure. Uh, for example, they'd argue that in looking at the civil service, this ignores the fact that um, over the last 40 years we've seen an opening up of different jobs in the law and politics. Um, for example, judicial appointments used to be um, selected through the Lord Chancellor, who was selected by the Prime Minister. However, now there are open adverts um, in the media for, for jobs of those type. Um, Parsons argues power is legitimate because it serves and benefits the collective goals of all people in society. Um, and so he would criticise Weberians for overplaying exploitation based on occupation and ownership um, and through social closure. And this ignores the way in which power and leadership serves everyone and how uh, the system is meritocratic and enables the most able people to reach the, the most um, specialised jobs. Um, Davis and Moore would also support the idea that allocation of jobs within the labour market is um, is meritocratic, um, best based on specialist skills, and they would argue Weberians overplay social closure and um, social background and social privilege and uh, prejudice. The postmodernists emphasise choice and change, and they would criticise the Weberians, broadly speaking, for emphasising the way in which um, identities are limited by class, status and party. Um, post, some postmodernists argue class is dead, such as Pekulski and Waters, and they would criticise Weberians for analysing class as being fragmented or, or changing. They would say that economic divisions are no longer important, whereas the Weberians say that these are, are con, you know, continue to be an issue. Um, the postmodernists would support the multi-dimensional view of Weberianism, which looks at social class in terms of ownership and, and labour market position, but also looks at status as an independent factor of class, which can affect class and have a relationship with it, and party, power and influence, which again can be um, separate from class. The postmodernists would argue, however, that Weberians overemphasise the way in which these factors are separate. The postmodernists would argue that these issues are combined simultaneously and it's very difficult to create quality research about these issues and therefore the Weberian emphasis on occupation in the labour market, uh, for example provided by Goldthorpe, might be seen as inadequate since it emphasises class and may seem to ignore, maybe seem to ignore of the um, impact of other factors at the same time. Bell Hooks might be an example of someone who emphasises the black female body and uh, white imperialist patriarchal society and argue that uh, the intersection of these factors uh, must be emphasised so Weberians ignore how they're combined simultaneously. Overall, in conclusion, um, Weberianism can be seen as presenting a multidimensional view which has been supported by a range of thinkers 
including left realism and postmodernism. Um, however, fundamentally, some of the changes to the class system might be ignored by Weberians, um, since they tend to assume that there will be uh, processes of fragmentation. Um, they could be seen as ignoring the way in which um, there are many continuities in the class system where economic divisions and ownership can continue to be factors. For example, Jameson, in looking at globalization, emphasizing, emphasizes the existence of you know, transnational corporations which are able to exploit global labor markets. Uh, this seems to suggest that um, the idea of fragmentation is very useful, but uh, wider economic divisions still need to be considered. That's a possible conclusion, but um, you have to consider the evidence and, and make a judgment uh, or give the sense of a, a judgment having been made.